Hopwood Hall Estate, built by my ancestors in the 1400s near Manchester, England, has been undergoing an extensive phased renovation over the past few years. Originally a timber-framed moated structure, it has been adjusted and added on to many times over the centuries to now include about 60 rooms. After the two heirs were killed in World War I, the house fell out of the family. It went through a series of uses, but eventually was vacated. Attacked by vandals, thieves, and inclement weather, the hall soon fell into major disrepair. Growing up as a young boy, I had heard stories about Hopwood Hall from my grandfather, but I never thought it actually existed. When I finally discovered that it was still around and on the verge of collapse, I decided to move from Los Angeles to Northern England to save it with the help of the community and heritage experts. I'm happy to say that Hopwood Hall Estate is now approaching the end of our second phase of major renovation works here at the hall. So I'd like to show you some of the progress that we have made and also show you some of the behind the scenes happenings that didn't make it into our other videos. But before we show you that, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and click the bell to be alerted about our latest content. This wave of works was a big undertaking because it was areas of the hall that had been neglected for many years, decades, and they needed to be repaired. There were leaks and bats getting in and pigeons and all sorts of holes and it really was on the verge of collapse. In fact, I remember a few years ago, someone saying they doubted that the servant's wing was gonna make it through another winter. And if you saw our previous videos about the rescue, you realize how dangerous it was in there. This is not exactly safe, but it is, but it's been vetted, it's okay. Yeah, that's two floors collapsed. Wow. Huh. And the fact that we have now shored it up, we've stabilized it, and we've seen this incredible transformation from crumbling, scary, falling apart walls and floors and ceilings into a stable, still needs a lot of work, but a stabilized section of the hall that's a blank canvas that we can now move forward and have a vision for the future of what this area can be used for. So through here, these used to be old kitchens and toilets, washing areas. There were also servants' rooms, bedrooms. There may have been a nursery and some children's rooms over here. We're not totally clear, but it is three stories high. In some areas we've cleared it out so you can see the vast amount of space. So in this area you can see this might have been bricked up and added later in time. Whereas you can see this threshold up here was probably the original entrance. So one of the things we talked about doing is reopening that original entrance to that height and having a much bigger space as you come into this room. Really looking forward to the next phase of works here. It's a whole new adventure ahead of us. You can see the new timbers here that have gone in to support all of this. So all of the roof tiles were off of this section. So this is a really important part of securing this area before all that heavy weight can go on top of it. It's amazing to think that a year ago when Bob and I came in here to look around, it was collapsing. It was so scary. We didn't know where to stand. You know, I was convinced I was just gonna fall through the floor. So to come in here, and now feel like it's clean and stable, the mold is gone, the sun's pouring in, it just feels really great, and you can see the possibilities of what it's going to be. One of our challenges was that in the 1940s, the vacant hall was institutionalized during World War II, and again in the 1960s, when an order of monks moved in and started a Catholic teacher training college. Unknown to the contractors at the time, some of those 20th century materials and improvements were not conducive to the historic fabric of the hall. Lime mortar is so important to a building because in a lot of places on Hopwood Hall, someone came through in the 1960s, and this is before they realized the damaging effects of using concrete instead of lime mortar causing the bricks to absorb moisture and blow out and crack and cause all sorts of problems. So we've got to get that out. We have to replace it with correct lime mortar. 
and we just now need to figure out the right color. So here are various samples of potential mortar combinations. Now as you can see, some are very bright and this style is kind of a smooth style. This is a little bit grayer. They just don't look right to me at all. But this one's much closer. I like the grit of this one and it looks rough how it would have been way back when the hall was built. This one just looks, uh, what is that? Who did that? <laughs> this one looks the best, but I don't know. This is all very stressful because if you don't pick the right color mortar, you're gonna have to live with it for a long, long time. And I have to admit, it's a bit of a challenging process because you have to go through so many different checks of finding the right grit, the right consistency, and also the right finish. And we also have to see how it's gonna dry. Is it gonna dry light, dark, or medium? All right, as an update to the brick color. So we had our meeting this morning and I talked with everybody and this will age and it won't dry too quickly in the way that they're gonna be doing it. This is just a temporary uh, example. So the bricks will be much more cleaned up and this will just, it'll look better when they do it. So as you can see, these slates behind me are hundreds and hundreds of years old. They were up on the roof of Hopwood Hall for many centuries and had to come down. Either the roof was collapsing or many of them were stolen or pulled down by vandals. Lots of problems, but they've all been taken and stacked down here. Now, over here, you can see these crates that were delivered are crates of slates and my little yellow hand truck to drive them around. But these pieces are now going up onto the roof and What's interesting about this is that these are new pieces of slate. Well, not really new. I mean, they're rock and they're still millions of years old, but these were newly mined. I think that's what you call it from the quarry. But what is interesting is it's the same quarry where the original slates were mined. So this is a brother of that one or a sister of that one but hundreds of years apart. But what's great about it is they then match in color and hue and thickness and look. Big works going on here today at the hall. The slate that is currently being stored to go on the roof is being lifted by this huge machine up to the top of the scaffolding so that it can start to be sorted and start to go back on. I think the most rewarding and exciting part has been actually trying to source the stones. Uh, the roofing slates have come out of a small quarry in Burnley and we have a quarry coordinator at Historic England so we look at the strategic sourcing of natural materials for the building industry. So here we've had to go to a quarry up on the moors above Burnley and pre-purchase all of the stones that we now see on the roof and pre-bought them and brought them back and stored them in the courtyard here so that we'd have them available because they can take two years to actually frost test them on the moors. So they sit on the moors for two winters while they're actually becoming these stones that we've got on the roof. We're going to be getting the new fascia there. Let's see, it's going out of focus now. And the paint's going to be going on on this. Where's my finger there? On this here, this these white areas. All of that is going to be uh, repainted with linseed paint, which would be historic. And we've got a couple of color samples here, which is this one, which is a kind of a stark white. I think that's too light and everybody agrees. And then we've got this one, which is more of a creamy color. If you look at the two together, you can see the difference here. 
This is the one that everybody seems to like, this creamier one. Uh, the other one's just too stark, I think, to be up there. Here is all the fascia that's going to be going back on the hall. Oh, wow, it looks like Jason has painted it. Is that one painted? Yes, I think that's painted. So this is painted with linseed paint, which is a special historical paint. And it takes a long time to dry. And then these pieces of wood are going to go back on the upper area by the eaves that I pointed out to you that we're replacing all those boards. But you can just see the color. Remember when we picked out this color, which is a historical color. And it's looking really good. I think he has to put a few coats on this and so it's not a fast process. Okay, we are about to bend some tin that's going to become part of the roof, that's going to become part of the valley. So you line it up. <clears throat> Measure it. Get your census box. And now here we are on the roof and you can see the valleys started to go in and we've got the new fascia is up wow that's looking really good so as you can see they're removing the roof and part of this is we have a very limited time to get this roof off and get the repairs done and get it back on because guess what it's almost bat roosting season and that means if the bats are gonna start roosting again, that we'd have to halt our works. Like any good renovation project, there are always obstacles and we have had our fair share of challenges in this phase of works. The biggest setback on this project so far has been the ecology. Throughout the project, we found um, possible bat roosts in the building, which has taken um, some time to overcome. It's also meant that um, we haven't been able to do certain works that we originally planned. Oh, I think the biggest setback has been coordinating the team with the presence of so many bats because we're right in the heart of a woodland. We've got summer bat roosts, we've got winter hibernation periods. So it's been very difficult coordinating. First of all, we have talked a lot about the bats, which you know from seeing our previous videos. So I'm just going to leave that one well enough alone. But we've also been facing British weather. We've had a number of days where we couldn't carry on because the weather was so severe and such cold driving rain that it was unsafe for the crew to be out there on the slippery slick roof. And then of course, one of our biggest challenges has also been access, trying to get the many people in that want to help volunteer and our friends group to participate in the restoration. It's a challenge because the way the site is configured, it doesn't allow free and easy access. So it has been hard to get the amount of people in that have interest in being involved and interest in seeing the hall and trying to balance all of that. It's a, it's a real challenge, but we're doing the best we can. During this restoration, there have been some undertakings that have been absolutely massive. And then there have been some tasks that are quite small but still really important in the overall project. For instance, there was this one wall that has been something I've really been wanting to change. All right, here is the wall that is going to be coming down. Now we are in the 1960s section of the hall and we need to get through that hole to open this up because there's another area over there. See it? You can see it, but I can't. This wall has been a thorn in my side. Now you might look at it and just think, wow, just knock it down. Well, it's not that easy in a historic building, even in an area that was added on in the 1960s because Hopwood Hall is a grade two star listed building. That means we can't just rip down any wall even if it's a newer wall, it all has to be run through and approved and we have to have a plan and just work through it. So while it's important that buildings are protected, it's also exciting when you can move forward on it. So it's taken a number of years to get to this point, but now that wall can come down. Ta-da! Look at that. 
it is open. We still have some work to do. These bricks have to be leveled off and cleared out, but look, I can walk through the wall. Amazing. The boards have to come off the windows, some electricity in here, a ceiling, maybe a coat of paint. This is gonna be the doorway to our new workshop slash training room in this forgotten corridor. So it's just incredible to have all of these legacy gifts coming in to the hall. We've had a number of people donate furniture, beautiful hand carved furniture. We have a chest that was donated from 1680. Of course, this beautiful clock from 1699. That's another so bad this ring. this is the bell they would have been hearing in 1699. Yeah. Wow. So when Jeff calls me and tells me that he has a grandfather clock that someone has donated to Hopwood Hall, I'm just absolutely blown away. This clock is not just any clock. It's from the year 1699. Like, what? Is it heavy? Yeah, get it's underneath not, it okay, in case okay. somebody falls yeah, off it. Okay. It's not that heavy, is it? No, but you just want to be careful with something yeah. this old. I'm just going to brush beneath That's it. Right. Just... Is this another skill you've learned, Hotwood, since you've been here? This is something I've learned in all my years here at Hopwood Hall. Oh, all right. I don't, I don't, you know, mean to show off or anything, but... <laughs> Jeez. There's gosh. no dropping it. Promise? I promise. No dropping it. So I'm going to get underneath it. You want me to do that? No, I think... Let me, please. Okay. You're on top of it now. But there's nothing more to hold it? No, it's just, it's weight. Jeez. Oh, that goes nearly there. I think there's a slit there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Can you check that it still clangs, please? Perfect. These are loose. Are they yeah. supposed to be? Yeah, they're off the things that are often missing off uh, grandfather clocks. We're lucky to have them. Why are they loose? What? So they can be taken off to get through doorways. Okay. And that should then rest on there, both sides. Wow. And that's it. One grandfather clock. It's also very exciting to continue to increase our security efforts, increasing the amount of security cameras, and ability to stop thieves and vandals from trying to break in. We've now got the entire hall covered in cameras, and it's just great to see these cameras being unpacked from their boxes, the cable being unwound, to see people here on site installing them. It just feels like yet another line of defense against the outside elements trying to get in. One of the critical works in this stage was this steel beam up here. This steel beam is like the spine of this section of the building. It's very integral to the structure and important to hold everything up. So there was a rotted old wood beam here that was coming down. It was full of dry rot and very, very old, but unfortunately it had to be replaced. Otherwise this whole area was gonna collapse. We did save what we could of that beam and it was replaced with steel, but they also had to make sure it wasn't going to jeopardize the structure above and around it. So once that was done, the area above it also had to be secured. So it was a very, very slow process. Once all of that was out and propped up, we were able to then bring in this new steel beam. This here is a temporary walkway that Bob added to reconnect the upper gallery with the back servant's wing. This area had become a shambles, collapsed. You couldn't walk from the upper gallery over to this section. It was just a hole here. This was collected yesterday, which is uh, an oak beam that we're going to put at the intersection of the stairs for the, the Lord Byron staircase because the beam that's in there is rotten. So I've got some machining to do on this so that when we replace it, it'll be exactly the same. The beam that I'm replacing is this one. And as you can see, it's slightly rotten. We can honestly say that Lord Byron would have, would have trod on that. This piece of oak lasted about 200 years. 
so the piece of oak we're replacing it with should last at least another 200 years hopefully longer because there won't be any water coming in What we're trying to achieve is something that hasn't um, been achieved for at least while I've been coming here, which is over 20 years, is that this section of um, floor, because of the narrow gutter above, which was constantly getting blocked, rotted all the floor. So what we haven't been able to do for over 20 years is walk from the what Lord Byron called his fire, his staircase up and into Lord Byron's bedroom. We've just replaced the, the structural timbers or floor joists which means that we can now put some timber on it so we can actually use it as a walkway. We're pretty much finished now just some bits and pieces and some extra screwing to do and then we're done so we can then walk from downstairs up into Lord Byron bedroom the quick way so if you were here in the upper gallery and you wanted to walk to the servants wing you couldn't do it because this was collapsed so you'd have to walk all the way back out down the stairs exit the hall and come back on the opposite entrance it took forever so now Bob has added this walkway and we can just easily breeze through. Here we can see the scaffolding is coming down and for the first time the new lime mortar is being revealed. Now it's still drying, it's still wet. They've done a great job. So here we are at the servant's wing and the scaffolding is now down. You can see all the new pointing and as I mentioned in an earlier video, it looks a little bit light right now. And you can see where the salt is pushing out of the bricks. So a lot of that will disappear over the next six months. After it goes through that process, it becomes much darker and blends in even more. It's been so long since we've been able to walk right up close to the building without scaffolding looks much more solid all the way up to the chimneys this was all really loose and crumbly before this restoration process took place and it's meant to look rough meant to look like it hasn't been restored more like it's just in great condition for a very long time and that's using mortar mix and techniques that they would have used way back when so that it's in keeping with the historical time period. Of course, all these windows need to be replaced. These were added in the 1960s and will be coming out. Some are still boarded up. We just leave them like that for now because it's an added security measure. Look at this. I mean, look how much more stable this roof is looking incredible isn't it the chimneys i mean it just looks so much better solid it's hard to believe the difference these are the chimneys we were at in our earlier video and now here they are fully solid with the right kind of mortar now, so they're not going to blow out. And I have to compare this to some of the other video. I can't even believe how much better this looks. Oh, wow. Look at this. Oh, this is incredible. This was, nothing was here before. 
It's been years, Bob. Years. 30 years with no roof back here, huh? Oh, and look, I just realized the antenna is gone. If any of you remember from our past videos, there used to be a 1960s television antenna up here on the roof. It was an eyesore and I couldn't stand it. And I'm so excited. I'm sorry that I missed it coming down. I wasn't here that day, but happy to say it is now gone, which was one of the last things I really wanted to pull out of here in this phase of works, because it just had no purpose being on this old hall. It looks ridiculous. It is really great to see how stable this all looks now. And you can see all the original stone slates have been put back in place along with a few new replacement slates and the new gutters and valleys and fascia. It just all looks fantastic and solid. Over here you can see this new flashing here, this fascia of the gutters and then what's kind of fun there and there you can see two of the timbers sticking out in the brick face and now you can see on the roof line we decided with historic england to actually keep some of the dips and bends that happen naturally as the house settled over the centuries it was decided that that is part of the character and part of the charm of hopwood hall so it was decided to leave that. I'm glad they did because I just love it. I love the sense of the old world feel of the hall, uh, but yet it's stable enough to keep standing. So overall, I'm absolutely thrilled to see this work happening. I just love it. I'm so happy and it just brings joy to my heart to look around and see that this section is going to last into the future. It's just incredible to look back on all of the progress that has been made over the last 11 months. And we are looking forward to the next phase, phase three. We're hoping to begin phase three in the next several months. And some of the major areas to target will include the morning room, the library, and the long gallery, among others. These areas have been some of the most difficult to tackle due to their location expense, and of course, bats. However, the team is up for the challenge, and once complete, the entire hall will be ready to then move on to the much more detailed restoration. So thank you for all your support. We hope you'll continue to stick with us. Please like, share, subscribe, and click the bell to be alerted about our latest content. And if you want to see more videos, please join us on Patreon. Thank you.